for a while. Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Listen, if you can't find the book of Revelation, <laughs> something is wrong. <laughs> If you can't find Revelation 22, flip your book to the back cover, then open the cover page. <laughs> when you're looking at Revelation 22, you ought to see the words, the end. The end. It is in my Bible. Where? It, it just says the end right there. It says the end in mine. Okay. Revelation 22. We're going to begin reading in verse number 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me, and or to give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, mm -hmm. and may enter through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the word of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Mm -hmm. Even so, Lord. come, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we come to this, your message tonight, dear God, I pray that you would encourage us and strengthen us as we look into your word and, and see what we can glean from these very last words of your scriptures, the very last words that you gave to the church to help us in our Christian walk, the very last words you gave to the world uh, to warn us of those things to come. And I pray, dear God, that you would do a mighty work through me in this service tonight. I pray that you would set me aside and fill me full of your spirit. Do only those things which you can do, for it's in Christ's name we pray. And amen. amen. What a wonderful prospect we find in these verses, along with a very stout warning to both the unsaved and the sleeping saints. I used to, to the unsaved, we are to say, today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Those people that we talk to are unsure of their salvation. Listen, 
They need to get it set today. Either by death or by the sudden coming of the Lord, you will meet a thrice holy God one day. Without the extended period of grace that God has given in this world, we would all be but lost. Thank God He's given a grace period Amen. to where we can be saved. Yes. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire, the Bible tells us. To the saints, I say, listen, it's high time to wake up out of sleep and to get busy doing something for God. The Bible tells us to redeem the time. For is it time is at hand? Let's talk about the end time is at hand. Sinners are approaching, or sinners are perishing. Yes. And the judgment seat of Christ is approaching. Mm. Yeah. What must be done needs to be done now. Yes. So tonight I just want to look at these verses and look at all the, really the, the beautiful things that you see and then the things that are warnings to us. In verse number 10 we find that the Bible says, for the time is at hand. The time is at hand. What are you talking about? The Bible talks about end times. He, he talks about there's going to be a falling away in the end times. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Except there come a falling away first. Brother and sister, listen, we're there. Amen. Yes. There's a great falling away in the church, getting away from the things of God, getting away from the Word of God. It ought to tell us. The more we see churches going away from God, it ought to tell us. Listen, time is at hand. The time is at hand. There also is the, the time is at hand for the gathering of Israel together. Jeremiah 31 and verse 8, the Bible says, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and shall gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them the blind and the lame and the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. Jeremiah is saying a great company is going to return here. We've already seen that started in 1948. There was a beginning of a return back to the land. It's not all happened. I, I'm told there's probably as many uh, Jews in New York as there are in Jerusalem. As many or more. They're not completely done gathering together, but they are gathering together. The time is at hand. Also, the Bible time tells us that their perilous times will be when the time is at hand. In 2 Timothy 3.1, the Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Listen, you look around the world and the things that are going in, on in the world, the things that are happening in the world, you know perilous times are coming. You look at the situation that's going on with Iran and Israel, you know perilous times are coming. Because listen, when that thing sparks off, if Israel does what I think it's going to do, there's going to be a whole lot more Arab countries come into the fix mm -hmm. and into the fighting than just Iran. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perilous times are coming. Also we see in this passage, in verse number 11, that at this point, Talk about at this point in the Bible, there's no check, second chances. No. The Bible says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust. Still. 
And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. God, God doesn't... That, when you get to that point in the Scripture, I'm talking about Revelation 22, everything is set at that time. Yeah. Nothing is going to be changing when you come to that. What you are is what you will be. But then we also think of the left behind is just that. When we think of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as we think about this thought, even so come Lord Jesus. Well, we know prior to His coming in Revelation 19 that He's going to come back in Revelation chapter 4 at the rapture of the church. And listen, those that have heard that are left behind are just that. Mm -hmm. Just like at the end of the book of Revelation in, in 22 and verse number 11, where God says that, hey, he that is unjust will be unjust still. He that is Unholy will be unholy still. He that is filthy, no matter how you say it, it still means the same thing. They're going to be that way still. According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1 through verse 12, the Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. The first verse clarifies what time it is. It's referring to the rapture of the church. He tells them at Thessalonica that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. He says, don't be shaken about all these things that you've heard that the day of Christ is at his hand. He says, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Listen, we're already in the falling away. Amen. We're just waiting for Christ to step out and when he steps out, Antichrist will step up. These events are simultaneous. Who, he's talking about the Antichrist who opposeth in verse 4 and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. It just goes along with what the Bible teaches about him going and sitting on the throne and claiming to be the Messiah. The Bible says it's going to happen. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? He's having to remind them, and we need reminded of these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit allows him to do the things that he is doing right now on the earth until the time that the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way when the church is raptured. When that time happens, the Bible says in verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Notice wicked is capitalized, referring to the Antichrist. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That clarifies whose it is a little bit more because Christ, when he comes uh, right before the millennial reign at the uh, battle of Armageddon, he's going to destroy the Antichrist. The Bible says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. 
It's not Satan himself. It's after the workings of Satan, the Antichrist. With all powers and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. He said they're going to be destroyed. They're going to perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, what cause? Because they rejected the truth. For that cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Notice in verse 12, they were damned, or they're damned, and the word believed, and had, but had, is all past tense. He's saying, because they did not in their past believe the truth when they had the opportunity. Because they had pleasure in unrighteousness, God said, I am going to send strong delusions. What delusions? With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. He's going to come, say, Antichrist is going to come with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Lying wonders. Lying wonders. He's going to lie to them with all deceivableness. And they're going to believe the lie. The sad fact of the matter is there are a condition to believe a lie. People sitting in churches right now or sitting in churches this morning, I realize 75-80% of the churches around here don't have a Sunday night service. But all of them that have been doped or duped, however you want to say it, into believing some other way to heaven than by believing on, not believing in, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for their soul salvation, they are going to be lied to during the tribulation. And they're going to believe that lie. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth now. And according to the Scripture. They're all damned at that point. They will not be able to get saved. They will not be able to get saved. You see, the, 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 the big fallacy in the book series that's out there left behind is, is that they're left behind in the churches and then they can still get in. The name of the book is correct. They're left behind. And when you're left behind, you stay behind. You don't catch up. Amen. Yes, the Bible teaches there'll be multitudes saved, but according to the Scriptures, according to this passage, it will not be anybody that heard the truth and rejected it. Mm -hmm. My friend, if you're watching this or listening to this on the internet, listen. It's not, well, I'll do it later. That doesn't cut it. That doesn't cut it. You better get saved before it's everlasting too late. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing to think about when we think of this passage in Revelation 20, 20 verse 13 and 14 is that they're lost forever. They're lost forever. The Bible says in verse number 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. 
and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. Now look in verse number 10. We're going to back up and catch a verse. We established that all the dead, all those that died on this earth and went to hell was going to be brought up and judged. And every single one of them that's brought up at this point in time that was judged at this point in time will be cast into the lake of fire. If you understand that, nod your head. Amen. Now look at verse 10. The Bible says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, they're already there, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The lake of fire is forever and ever. It's not a, a short penalty time. It's not like hockey. Hockey, you get in trouble and get a penalty. They put you in a penalty box for two minutes. If it's bad enough, for five minutes, I think. The lake of fire and hell is not that way. That's a fallacy that is being taught that is unscriptural. It's unscriptural as the Satan of hell. It's as wicked as the Satan of hell. Let me rephrase that. That's one of them damnable doctrines the Bible talks about. Those ones that will send you to hell for eternity. They're lost forever. But the good thing is, eternity will be a wonderful place for the saints. Glory, hallelujah. The Bible says in verse number 12 and 13, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Mm. To give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. See, everything prior to this is going to be passed away. What am I talking about? Sickness, pain. Mm. Blindness. Deafness. Mm -hmm. All those things that bother us, mm -hmm. they're going to be gone. The Bible says that former things are passed away. It talks about that. According to the scripture here, my reward is with me. Future things are reserved forever. His reward is with him. Where's that at in eternity? Hey, at this point, new heaven and new earth, everything is going to be new. You go back and you read in uh, chapter 22, you'll read about the new heaven and new earth and the, the new Jerusalem. All the former things are gone. Everything is new. Mm -hmm. Your mansion. Mm -hmm. All of those things. And then the, another great aspect about eternity is it's eternal. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can move in a new house tomorrow and not be in it for a year from now. Mm -hmm. You can get a new car tomorrow, and 10 years from now, it's worn out and junk. Mm -hmm. This is eternal. Nothing is ever going to change. Mm -hmm. 
It'll be just as new a million years from now as it is at that moment. It's eternity. Oh, what, the, what that's going to be like. But on the flip side of that is eternity will be a dreadful place for the sinner. Yes. Verse number 15. For with our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Without. In other words, they're not going to be in with God, as he's talking about 12 and 13. They're going to be without. You see, death is sure. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. Judgment is certain. The Bible talks about it in this passage. Judgment is certain. The Bible also talks about hell being hot. In Mark chapter 9, verses 33 through 48, the Bible says, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go to hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Christ here is trying to get a principle across to people. We hold our hands dear to us. They help to get the food and the drink to our mouth. You can hold your grandchildren with them. Amen. Your hands are very important. Mm -hmm. Listen, your feet's important. Mm -hmm. They get you to the refrigerator so you can use your hands to get the food to get to your mouth. <laughs> That's pretty important. They use your you use your feet to get to your grandchildren so your hands can pick up the grandchildren and you can hold them. But your eyes is also important. Yes. Because you use your eyes to see the path to get to the refrigerator with your feet so you can use your hands to get the food. I don't know if that's spiritual, but it came right, I just, that come off the top of my head. <laughs> to show you the importance of what God's saying. Listen, it's more important to get to heaven than to have the eye. It's more important to get to heaven than have both feet. It's more important to get to heaven than having both of your hands. He's not telling you to go out and cut it off so you can get to heaven. He says it's more important to get to heaven than anything else there is in this world. Amen. Why? Because where the fire is not quenched and the worm dies not. You know the Bible says, of man, O oh worm that I am. Yeah. You study out the Bible and you find, I believe it's two or three places where the Bible, or man calls himself a worm. That's the reason why Christ says, where the worm dieth not. In other words, you're not going to die there. It's not you go there and pay for your sin, sin for a certain amount of period and you just cease to exist. That doesn't happen. 
Oh, worm that I am, you don't die. By the way, oh, worm that you are too. For those that are sitting there thinking, yeah, pastor's a worm, but I'm not. <laughs> no. The Bible says where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. That means you. You don't die. You don't get away from it. It's dreadful for the sinners. But you know what? God gave us His Word for a purpose. He's telling us about the last times. He's telling us these things are happening. But you know what's exciting for people today? He doesn't end the Bible with just that. He gives you hope. Amen. Yes. For the unsaved, He gives you hope in the day that you're living. Because listen, the events of the book of Revelation, chapter 4 through chapter 19, or really through chapter 22 here, have not taken place yet. Notice what he begins to say in verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Hey, God says, listen, I know at this point, if you're reading this, you're still in the churches. Mm -hmm. He said, I sent this to testify you in the churches. Why? Because the churches are falling away. Mm -hmm. They've gotten away from God. They've gotten away from the truths of God. And God is given, reaching out one last time to them. He says, I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride. Notice he did not say the church. Because there's so many things out there today it's calling itself a church that is not. He says the bride. Talk about those that are saved. He said the spirit and the bride say come. Let him that heareth say Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. God tells you what's going to be happening in the last days. But after he finished telling you what is going to be happening in the last day, he says, listen. If you're still listening to this, come. If you've heard this, come. The Spirit is calling. The Spirit and the saints are calling. Saints should be witnessing. The Spirit is calling. God's salvation is free to all. Whosoever will, come. He's given them the last opportunity. You see, He gives you that last opportunity right before the judgment. Listen, you have up until the judgment to make this call. In other words, up to when you die. Or if people are living through, have made it through all of this up to this point. He's still saying, come, the long suffering of God. Come, verse 18 and 19, he says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He, he pronounces one last or a judgment for those 
who meddle with God's Word. He says, don't change any part of this. Don't change the fact that hell is forever in heaven. Don't change the fact that death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. Don't, don't change the fact of any of this thing. You see, to change it is fatal. To reject it is fatal. And I'll submit to you, to ignore it is fatal. Mm -hmm. Ignoring it is the same as rejecting it. Then Jesus says in verse 20, He which testifieth of these things saith, Surely, notice, I come quickly. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, I come quickly. Amen. You know what John said? Even so come the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes. His coming is quickly. His coming is surely. And for the church, His coming will be quietly. He's not going to come and take the church out with a big fanfare. He's going to come and blow the trumpet and only the saints of Christ will hear. Mm -hmm. And we'll be gone. Mm -hmm. As the Bible says in Corinthians, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. What a day it will be. And then finally, Just God's so. grace will be sufficient until He does. Amen. Amen. The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So God will give us the grace to suffer in this present world. God also gives us the grace to serve in this present world. And God gives us the grace to survive in this present world. We follow Him. We trust Him. He says He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He says He'll not allow anything on us that we cannot handle. That we won't be able to endure. That's giving us the grace for suffering and surviving. Listen. Listen. Everything that we have need of, God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Mm -hmm. And all these things will be added unto you. Amen. The problem is, people in the last days aren't seeking Him. We need to stay, stay true to God and to God's Word. Mm -hmm. We need to be telling the people, hey, there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Mm -hmm. There's a place of torment which you cannot imagine and you don't want to go there. Yes. We need to be reaching out to the lost and dying of God. Even so, come quickly. Are you looking for that day? Of the ten virgins Jesus talks about in the New Testament, in the Gospels. The Bible says five were prepared and waiting. Five were not. When he came, five had everything they needed to go. Five did not. Which five are you in the part of? We need to be ready. Not only in this area of salvation, but in this area of service. Yes. To be able to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know, a lot of people don't think of it this way, but every single person in this world is going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ one day. Yes. Every single person. Every single person in this world is going to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ one day. Mm -hmm. The only difference in the two different judgments that's going to be one judgment for the saved, for those born again believers, is going to be concerning the rewards that they're going to receive. Judgment seat of Christ. The second is the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. Those that have rejected, those that ignore the Word of God, mm -hmm. they're going to be standing in front of the one they've rejected, the one they've ignored. And they're going to give account of their works, mm -hmm. but it's not for heaven. Mm -hmm. It's for the punishment of hell. Mm -hmm. You see, He is just in everything that He does. The only thing your good moral life will get you, maybe a little bit less of a heat. I, I don't know exactly what the different levels are going to be, but the Bible does talk about to whom much is given, much is required. The Bible talks about that those who know more will suffer more stripes. Punishment is what it's referring to. Where are you going to be? If the Lord Jesus Christ come back tonight and everything was set in motion, where would you be? Would you be ready to go to heaven? Would you be ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? Or would you be ready to go into the tribulation for the unsaved? Honestly, both could be a scary proposition. Mm -hmm. Psalm says, Have you did your all for Jesus? Have you gave your all for Jesus today? Have you? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for all that you've done in our lives and will do in our lives. And I pray, dear God, that you continue through the power of the Holy Spirit to help draw us closer into you, to help us to be more sanctified in Christ Jesus. Help us to do more for you. That we can see people saved and know one day as I, as I have that eternal hope and the assurance that I will be in heaven one day. And I pray that you just bless and strengthen in all that is said and done. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.